boys and girls of the YouTube. As promised, we're here to talk about the Crusader Thorns of the Invoker build. And boys and girls, check this out first. It's a cool looking set, the Thorns of the Invoker. I like the way that it looks. Look, cool little pet. Do you guys have your tree pet? Kind of looks like Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. A baby version of Groot. So sorry if you guys don't have it, but I'm showing mine off here. Anyway, back to the build. What we're going to get into is the gear straight away. Thorns of the Invoker. Let's go through the bonus stats first. So for two pieces, your Thorns damage now hits all enemies in a 15 yard radius. Each time you hit an enemy with punish, slash, or block an attack, your Thorns is increased by 35% for two seconds. We're going to have this shit up pretty much 100% of the time. For four pieces, you take 50% less damage for 20 seconds after damaging an enemy with Bombardment. The lovely belt that we have equipped is going to be casting Bombardment every 8 seconds. So, holy shit, we're going to take 50% less damage the whole time, but we're going to get into the items in a moment. For six pieces, the attack speed of Punish and Slash are increased by 50% and deal 800% of your Thorns damage to the first enemy hit we're going to be using punish we're going to get to the skills in a moment with the thorns of the invoker pieces the set pieces we're using all six and they are the helm the shoulders the gloves the pants the boots and surprisingly braces you know usually it's the chest piece but in this case it works out well with the braces because in the chest piece we're using the akila karas so Akila Karas is definitely very important. Again, we're going to be at 100% resource pretty much the whole time. So we're going to have this buff. While above 93% primary resource, all damage taken is reduced by 50%. And damage reduction is ultra important for this because, believe it or not, the Crusader, this huge class with plate looking armor is actually quite squishy it's more squishy than my demon hunter surprisingly so we're gonna be using damage reduction as much as humanly possible and we're using the traveler's pledge as the amulet in conjunction with the compass rose so as you can see the set bonuses for this are while moving damage taken is reduced by up to 50 percent while standing still damage is increased so most of the time when we're doing damage we'll be standing still but hey when we're moving we get that nice damage reduction also the belt that i mentioned briefly before belt of the trove as you can see every eight seconds call down bombardment on a random nearby enemy now that can roll as either six or eight seconds six seconds is better because bombardment does a lot of damage unfortunately i got eight but hey i get that uh damage reduction for 20 seconds and it casts every eight seconds so it works well and this belt was goddamn hard to farm i tell you that right now especially if you're doing guides like me and you're playing every class in the game you're farming a lot of goddamn gear you know that's four sets for each of the classes that you're farming and all different legendary items for each set it's ridiculous so this was a pain in the ass to farm. I don't know if I was just unlucky, but hey, we got it. And I've also tested this belt here, the angel hair braid. Uh, because we're using punish a lot, uh, I thought this might work well, but it just doesn't compare to the belt of the trope and also the set bonus for bombardment and the damage reduction. It's just too critical, so... Definitely got to go with the belt of the trove here. We're using a justice lantern. Uh, very important. We gain reduction equal to 48% of your block chance. So we're definitely buffing our crusader with block here. Block is very important. It stacks very well with, with thorns. Like I mentioned earlier on here. Each time you block an attack, your thorns is increased by 35%. So if we're not using punish, we're blocking. And also blocking is ultra important for survivability and damage reduction anyway. So not only is it procking our thorns, it's also making us stay alive. So Justice Lantern, ultra important there. I've already mentioned the set pieces here, the pants and the boots. The weapon, very, very important, hack. As you can see, the legendary stat for hack is 100% of your thorns damage is amplified on every attack. So we're amplifying thorns every time we attack. So huge, huge damage bonus there. And of course, Votoya's Spiker again. In conjunction with our thorns damage, the legendary stat is enemies affected by provoke take double damage from thorns. 
So as you can imagine, as you can imagine, we're going to be using provoke. So everything really comes together quite well. An important thing to note here, boys and girls, is if you look at all of your invoker pieces, take a look in the secondary stat column. You can see plus thorns damage. Every single thorns of the invoker set item has plus thorns damage in the secondary slot there all of them so you can see that secondary plus 2650 thorns damage uh, the pants plus 2520 damage the boots plus 2423 damage so on the other items that aren't thorns items won't necessarily have that rolled your thorns items automatically have them a killer caress as you can see i've rolled seven two eight eight so wherever you can wherever possible make sure that you're rolling your thorns damage on the items so as you can see there the belt of the trove anywhere you possibly can roll thorns damage and uh, talking about stats another important thing to keep in mind is there's no point going for critical hit chance because Thorns does not hit with critical hits. So you're better off going for vitality. Make sure you've got a lot of vitality. So important for survivability. And I'll go for life sometimes wherever I can here as well if I've already got vitality. Uh, the gloves here, I went for vitality. Just go for vitality. No point going for critical hit uh, damage and critical hit uh, chance because you can't crit with thorns. Now let's talk about the gems that we're using. In the amulet, I've got the Boyarski's chip, and this is ultra important. It adds just pure damage to your thorns. So it adds 65,600 damage to thorns. Uh, taunt the first enemy hit by primary skills for two seconds. Uh, doesn't really mean shit, that one. But we want this for the thorns damage. Definitely Bane of the Trap, increasing damage from uh, enemies that are in affected by movement impairing effects or frozen, whatever. And Bane of the Powerful, lastly, again, increasing damage against elites and reducing damage taken by elites. So that's pretty much the gear, boys and girls, and the basics with the gear. If you guys have any in-depth questions, Please hit me up in the comments below. We've got to keep this guide moving, otherwise it's going to be too long. The skills that we're using are Punish and Celerity. We're using Consecration with Bed of Nails. Iron Skin with Reflective Skin. Steed Charge with Spiked Barding. Obviously for a bit of mobility and speed increases in our rifts. Provoke with hit me so ultra important when you're in that pack of enemies Make sure you hit your provoke and hit as many enemies as you can because it doubles your thorns damage absolutely ridiculous Accurate's champion with profit for our passives. We're using indestructible hold your ground iron maiden and fervor and that covers off our skills and our passives Let's check out can cube the all-important Weapon in Canos Cube, we're using Akarat's Champion. So every successful block has a 25% chance to reduce all cooldowns by one second. Huge. Armor. Heart of Iron. Gain thorns equal to 300% of your vitality. So like I mentioned before, instead of rolling for crit chance or crit damage with your gear, if you haven't got vitality, go for vitality. Because again, it stacks up with your thorns damage. You know, So it's not stupid. It, trust me, it'll work and jewelry convention of elements because thorns actually is a physical damage when this shit rolls around to the physical damage side of things you will notice a huge increase in your damage it buffs your thorns big time boys and girls and that's why it's worth mentioning actually go physical damage with your braces as well if you can as long as you've got strength and vitality go for your physical damage because you should automatically have your secondary thorns damage there in your braces. So that's all good. Let's talk about Paragon points. Make sure that you have your movement speed capped at 25% through your gear and your Paragon points or your skills. Uh, everything else dump into strength. Your offense. Because I mentioned critical doesn't do shit here for this particular build. We're putting everything into cooldown, reduction, then attack speed, then crit damage and then critical hit chance because it's pretty much ineffective for this. You don't even have to really put them in there, but put them in there anyway for the hell of it. Uh, for defense, we're going to be using resist all, armor, then life, then life regen. Utility, we're going to be using area damage, life per hit, resource cost reduction, gold find in that order. Boom! And that 
boys and girls of the YouTube is the build for the Crusader class Thorns of the Invoker. Let's go do a bit of an example, show you what this thing is made out of, and then we'll call it a day. It's up to you all to give it a go at home. All right, all right, all right. Let's do a bit of a demo here, boys and girls. Check this elite pack out. Gone, gone, absolutely gone, gone ski. It's a pretty cool build, I must say. It's, it works a lot better than I thought that I could ever have imagined. I really thought Crusaders sucks for a little while, but hey, Thorns is pretty good. Thorns is pretty good. I'm really, and I'm not even like, I haven't got like the best gear. I haven't got like an, an awesome set of ancients and, you know, a couple primals in there or anything like that. It's literally just a build that I'm experimenting with. And I mostly worked with it so I can do the set dungeon guide for you all. And that's coming up real soon. So make sure you stay tuned for the set dungeon guide coming up. Probably the next video or maybe the one after. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do yet. I might record it tonight, depending how I'm feeling. It's getting very late here where I am now. It's like... 4.30 a.m. Dude, seriously, who the hell is up at 4.30 a.m. that actually works for a living? Me. That's who. Bannock13. We'll smash one more elite here. You know, you guys get the point. It's good. Bane of the Powerful works really well against elites as well. Great survivability. And that's pretty much all I can tell you about this mofo. So give it a go yourselves, see what you think, uh, make sure you tune back in, don't forget to subscribe, show your support, you know, I'll appreciate it so much, and the set dungeon guide will be coming up real soon, maybe even in the next 24 hours or so, we'll see what happens. Boys and girls of the YouTube, thanks so much for tuning in, please be sure to come back.